<coughs> well, um, good evening. Um, the fundamental fact is basically that all human knowledge and ideas about the nature of what actuality is, of what's going on here, um, are inaccurate. Um, so it behooves anyone that wishes to um, make any headway in investigating what's actually going on here, what one's actual situation is, what one's nature, the nature of one's being is, the nature of the being of the, the field of reality is, and so on and so forth, um, it behooves one to um, ignore <laughs> the, the, the precedent set by all of the enormous body of knowledge um, that, you know, people have uh, accumulated in terms of ideas and interpretations about what's actually happening here. Um, the fundamental reason why these, accurate, these, these ideas are inaccurate um, is that what is happening here cannot be captured accurately um, through concepts, through symbols, through any kind of logical mapping, and so on and so forth. It's intrinsic to the nature of what this is that that is the case. Um, it's the only way that it can be ascertained is directly, and its nature can be ascertained and its properties can be ascertained, is directly and irrationally. Now, fortunately, this is very easy to do because the very nature of your being is such, happens to be such that um, you have direct engagement with the field of actuality. And it also happens that its irrational nature is one with your irrational nature, so you 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 have um, you have the the necessary uh, um, uh, mechanisms and uh, 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 let's say uh, uh, paradigms of knowledge to assimilate it. Um, <coughs> but as long as one insists on trying to correlate the nature of reality. With, with normal human um, philosophies and theories and so on and so forth, one is doomed to be, uh, uh, to be confused and to be uh, <laughs> made, made dizzy, dizzy <laughs> with, uh, with uh, the, the incoherence of what is actually here by comparison with any human or normal version of what it supposedly is. <clears throat> um, of course, the method of yoga is very, very simple. Um, let reality show you what it is. Uh, and it does so very directly uh, and very fully. Uh, the only, again, the only caveat is uh, if you have preconceptions of what it is you're looking for or what you expect to find, those are going to get in the way and inhibit your noticing of what is actually present. Um, I expect uh, uh, you all, uh, certainly, certainly most of you all, if not the entirety of you all, have, are, are somewhat familiar with um, my presentation, so this is probably not um, new ground for you. Um, anyway, I'd be glad to discuss with you any aspects of this uh, that seem uh, interesting to you or seem relevant in terms of your process of noticing, of discovering what you actually are, what this actually is.
Yeah, Nancy, is that a is that a, a beckoning? myself. Um, I was wondering, is there a way uh, of incorporating the body uh, with what you're uh, describing? I remember uh, at the retreat last November, what I found really valuable was uh, this paying attention to sensation, listening to sound without labeling anything. So what? So what about that? I'm presuming this is part of um, well, I don't know how to put it into words, but I was wanting to uh, have a, a sense of um, incorporating the body with um, what your <laughs> with its presence or whatever your. Um, Speaking of. Sure. Well, in actuality, there is no body. The body is a is a correlation is a is a is a classification of certain sets of experiences, with contrast with certain other sets of experiences, which are con- which are which are, are cl- categorized as not being body. So I see my hand and it's my body. I see the computer and it's not my body. Um, so the, the distinction between body and not body is very arbitrary and essentially imaginary. Um, all any and all experience, by the very fact of its existence, by the very fact of its presence, um, is actuality itself, and as such is is a is a is a is a complete and fruitful field for study of the nature of actuality. So anything you experience, if you, but however you're classified, if you classify it as body, if you classify it as not body, if you classify it as mental, if you classify it as, as imagination, if you classify it as anything whatsoever, if it actually exists as experiential actuality in your experiential field, then it is reality itself, and and studying it is uh, supremely valuable, but. Don't fall under the sway of human categories. You have to abandon human categories. Forget about body. Forget about not body. Forget about subject. Forget about object. Forget about matter. Forget about mind. Forget about time. Forget about space. Just here's this. This is this is, okay. And I'll allow you. You can use the, the notion here. This is here. Okay, good. So what when I say this is here, what am I talking about? And that's the interesting question. Look and see. And of course, you can look at the body. You can look at the not body. I mean, again, you can look at in all these categories, but these all these categorizations are not accurate categories. These categories do not exist in reality. Reality is a single thing. Okay, actuality is one thing. It has no pieces. It has no parts. It has no subgroups. It has no subsystems. It presents as infinitely differentiated, which makes it very peculiar to investigate. So there's all this color and shape and sound and texture and feeling and notions and, and emotion and all of this inconceivable um, smear of experiential qualities that are presented with absolute instability, but none of them are anything other than the experiential field itself. None of them have any separate existence. None of them are are, are uh, subsystems. None of them are actual entities. There's only one entity that exists, and that is, in your case, that is your experiential field. That's it. That's the only noun. There's no other nouns. So a noun like body is, is, is imaginary. It doesn't exist. So what I'm hearing is the experiential field simply is period. I mean, that's yes. just it. Yes, it is. <laughs> look, at, look, look at, just notice this, this, the obvious self-verifying fact of that and look at the way that that is so. And nothing is being negated. 
what you're used to thinking of your, is your body or your sensations. Or, I mean, all these, what you're used to thinking of is all these categories is not being negated or canceled out, but, it's, but none of it is actually those categories. Those categories are, are imaginary labelings of something that is not like that, that is not that. Words, in other words. Yeah, just words. they're just words. They're empty words. They're hollow lies. Hmm. They're, they're, they're pretty, pretty hypotheses that turn out to have no, no accuracy at all. If you get confused by that, think of a dream. In a dream, there can seem to be so many conditions present and beings present and actions present and bodies and th minds and all of the has history and all this stuff. And you wake up and you, you look at the dream and you think, there was nothing there. There were no bodies there. There were no worlds there. There was no event there whatsoever. It looked like it was, but the only thing that was actually there was the fact of dreaming itself. And that, did, likewise, the only thing that is here is the experiential field. And, of course, what we call dreaming is just a, another name for the experiential field. There's something on the tip of my brain, because I've been, I've been, I don't know, giving some thought to that lately. I've been just kind of reflecting on, just in some random moment, that dream seems so real. Well, here I am here. This here seems so real. Um, I don't know what to say about that, but I just kind of wanting to create this, um, oh, what's the word? When they, they collide, you know, just to, to really have a sense of, You know, because there's such an attachment to this real here, and to be able to uh, loosen the grip of that attachment to this is real. Why is this any more real than my dream? You know what I mean? Yeah, it is. Re it is real. This is completely real. Your dream is completely real. Deep sleep mm -hmm. is completely real. They're all completely real, but they're only real when they're showing up right now. They're only oh. real if they are being experienced right now. I never had that piece before. Well, that's why I like the word actuality. Forget the word real. Real is, 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 is very abstract. Actuality means what is actual. And if you look experientially, obviously what is actual is only actual here and now because you uh -huh. can't find any other actuality. So this is completely actual. But it's not a world. It's not bodies. It's not a conversation. It's, not, it's, it's just this. Because what it really is cannot be put into words, and those words have implications that are inaccurate. Uh, that's, wow. So, actuality, just this. Yes, actuality, just this. And then look at that. Don't, don't hold that as another abstraction. <laughs> don't hold that as a buzzword. Use that as a jumping off point to engage with what it refers to, which is what it is here. Yeah, which is not which is a nonverbal, obvious, self evident, self verifying um, condition. And it's the soul condition. Wow. It's very simple. The only way you can get in trouble is trying to overcomplicate it. Which is yeah. a normal human mode, you know. We're experts at, at being with this very in very complicated fashions. Yeah, I can do that. No. I mean, it has infinite differentiation, so it's it has an infinite an infinity of qualities. So it can seem complicated, but it's not really complicated because the complications don't actually exist as separate things. Like a dream can seem complicated, but of course, there's only since it's only the thing there is dreaming. It's not complicated. It just looks that way. A dream has no moving parts. It just looks like it does. <laughs> and likewise, this world here, this waking world, so-called, has no moving parts. It just looks like it does. It's just this experiential field that sits here without moving. What seems to show up in it moves a lot, but it itself does not move. Here doesn't budge. Now doesn't budge. 
Say that last word again. Here doesn't budge, now doesn't budge. Ah. Hmm. And everything that seems to come and go in it is just it presenting its it, this that is here now presenting itself. And the presentations themselves have no autonomous existence and essentially no reality except as presentations of this. It's really very simple. <laughs> yeah, easy for you to say. Yeah. Well, look at your own experience. Can you find anything other than your experiential field right here, right now? No. Well, I mean, if you can't find it, if it, the idea that it exists is just a fantasy or a hypothesis, and if you hold that fantasy or hypothesis, you hold it right here, right now. Mm -hmm. So it itself is just more right here, right now, presenting itself. Yeah. You know, just, and you already know this, you've probably heard it a million times in the daily life, there's just getting the caught up in the mind. And um, so coming back to this is just, you know, really refreshing for lack of a better word. Sure, but even getting caught up in the mind is just this. You can't leave this. You're caught up in the mind. You haven't gone anywhere. Where are you? You're here. When are you? You're now. What are you? You're this. Oh, I'm really thinking of all this stuff. You know, thinking of all this stuff is a euphemism for this. It can look like thinking. It can look like, like, like moving. It can look like you know, moving your body around, it can look like talking, it can look like going to sleep, it can look like dreaming, it can look like dying, it can look like anything. But huh. it's always exactly, all of that that it looks like just appears in this exact same thing that is just here now. You remember that, you remember that, um, the, the Ram Dass book, the, his first book, Be Here Now? Yeah. It's like, as an admonition to be here now, it's a joke because when else are you, when when else could you possibly be? Yeah. But but you say is here now. That's that's just like that's the whole story. There's nothing else to say. That's that's everything right there in that sentence. And then all of the complications and ramifications are just a fractal infinity of what is here now looks like to itself. I think I'm getting a better sense listening as to these complications. Yeah. yeah. Don't don't follow the complications. See what what they actually are. And they're right. all presentations, you could say, um, uh, images. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, images implies visual, but, but you know, in, in sound, in, in, the, in the field of hearing, you might call it sounds, but they're all just presentations of the energetic liveliness of this that is here. And that energy is not a new thing. That energy is the energy of this that is here presenting itself to itself as whatever it happens to look like. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to hear you, Peter. <laughs> it's going to be a while before June. <laughs> No, when it's June, it'll be now. <laughs> you nailed it. Yeah. No, I. this is really helpful. Good. Well, it's nice talking to you, Nancy. It's very simple. 
look at what is actual, i.e., look at experience, which is, you know, which is a, a it's a silly thing to say because you can't not look at it. It's not like looking at experience as opposed to not looking at experience. Looking at experience just means notice that, in fact, experience is present. Experience is presenting itself. And feel very sensitively, very intelligently, what and, and the way in which this is so. Not analytically. You don't think about it. Don't, don't try to make sense of it. Just feel it like hedonistically. Feel it like you're listening to a symphony. Feel it like you're, you know, you're 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 enjoying the quality of fabric or something, you know. Feel it like a scent, like a like a a, 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 a a sensual experience. Feel light, you know. You light is always present. What what does light feel like? What's the texture of light? What's the texture of sound? What's the texture of thought? And all of these things that we used to think of as so different, actually have the same texture. And, uh, you know, and, and look for yourself at, at the way this is so. Look for yourself at what is here. And in, 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 in look, doing that, you'll discover how it's here. You won't discover it rationally. You won't discover it in a way that you can say or talk about or think about. But you will discover it, you will learn to know it intimately um, with your transcendental intelligence which is your, your true nature. Your transcendental intelligence is what you always, is what you are, you always have been. That's what's looking out your eyes right now, is your transcendental intelligence. You know, and it, it takes it takes a certain amount of acclimation for people who are accustomed to normal human modes to appreciate the the inherent intelligence because it's not a rational intelligence. It's not an intelligence of thinking like, oh, I'm thinking about this, or it's not an intelligence of analysis. Um, it's an intelligence like. Um, um, It's the intelligence of, of patterning, of experiential energy. It's the intelligence of a rainbow. It's the intelligence of a cloud. It's the intelligence of a hand. This is, a, this is inconceivably intelligent. Look at this. Look at how intricate that is. Look at how precise it is. Look at all these different ways that it can move and all the things it can do. It's like, that doesn't happen by thinking about it. That doesn't happen by describing it. How does that happen? That's the inherent intelligence. The inherent intelligence is how you breathe. The inherent intelligence is how your heart beats. The inherent intelligence is how the light bulbs in this room are shining. The inherent intelligence is how gravity is holding everything down to the floor. It's this, it's this inconceivable functionality that all the patterning of, of, of experiential um, patterns is imbued with and consists of. And it's easy to get to, 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 to get the hang of it just by by feeling it. And fe feeling, feeling things like things like beauty. Um, come are, are are very explicit manifestations of the inherent intelligence. You see, you know, you see a beautiful sunset, or you admire the beauty of the intricacy of a hand, or or you look at a, a light bulb and look at its its warm glow and just go, wow, that's inc just just that amazing presence. That is is evidence of, and that is functioning of the inherent intelligence. That's very naked and very clear and, and quite accessible. And you don't have to think about it. It's just, it's, it's immediately obvious. The inherent intelligence has no process. 
you know, with, with human thought, we're used to thinking about something, and there's a thing, and then there's the thought about it, and then there's some kind of result or output. It's like, it seems like a process or a, a time lag. The inherent intelligence is instantaneous. The inherent intelligence is in its manifestation. It's complete. So the beauty of a sunset is right there in the sunset. It doesn't have any extra processing where you need to go and sit and scratch your head and say, gosh, I wonder if that looks nice. You know, you just look at it and you go, wow. <laughs> it's just, it, it's, 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 it's manifest. It's actual, right? Without process, without any, any separate subsystems needing to needing to be engaged. Yes, Nancy. So the word that I'm going to use is attending to. I mean, you don't really need to attend to a sunset because they are gorgeous. They are just, you know, wow. I mean, you'd have to be just checked out but you know let, let's just say it's uh, other circumstances just kind of you know your normal everyday that's not grabbing your attention it would seem to be um, attending attending to no an attending that you can do or not do is an imaginary pretending that's an attending of the conceptual mind the actual attending is the presence of attention, and the presence of attention is an evidence if you're experiencing something. Ah. Right now you're seeing your computer. You're, so that means it's in, you're attending to it. You might not be thinking about it. You, you might think it's boring or ugly or mundane or, 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 or whatever. But in actual fact, your computer is just like a sunset. It, your computer has major wow factor. Imagine you're completely blasted out of your mind on LSD and you, <laughs> and all of a sudden you looked at your computer. It's like, what would you see? You'd go, ah, ah. You know, you would, be, you would just be blown away. You would, you would, what? I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you know, it would be too much. And that's, that, that wow factor is the nature of all experience, the nature of any experience. It's more obvious in things that we, that we, that we, you know, that we allow to, to allow ourselves to appreciate, like a sunset or something, or sex, or I mean, whatever you know, for an individual or, or an amazing, you know, say you're eating a, a meal that's just heavenly delicious. You take a bite of something and you go, "Oh my God, that's good." I mean, yeah. just that whole, wow, you know, what is that? What's it made of? There's no logic there, and. Well, that wow, that wow is exactly the same thing when you notice it in something that you think of as amazing as in something you think of as mundane or boring or stupid or normal. Hmm. Say more about that because it would seem like there, to the more mundane things there might just be need to be more sensitivity or, but you're saying no, no, it's all one thing. You notice that there already is full sensitivity. When you see your computer, you're seeing it with total sensitivity. The presence of experience is sensitivity. Ah. So if you see something, that's full on 100% sensitivity already, right there. If you have a, a narration, a story that is showing up in your mind of, oh, this ugly old computer, I should really get a new one. This thing's kind of dirty and run down and it's just slow, it doesn't work very well, and I don't know how to run it. All that story is also here, maybe, if it is, or whatever. But that has nothing to do with what you're seeing. I mean, a certain amount of it, it can be a useful experiment or useful training is um, separate out your experiential fields. Notice how how when, you, when something is present in your field of vision, if something else is present in your field of hearing, it doesn't actually affect what's in your field of vision. Your field of vision does not impinge upon by your field of hearing. Your field of vision is not impinged on by your field of thought either. Right. So I, if I look at my computer and I say, God, what an ugly old piece of crap computer. And if I look at my computer and say, God, this beautiful, amazing gem, I'm so fortunate to have it. What I'm seeing doesn't change. It's exactly the same thing in either case. And normalcy is a fantasy line. Normalcy is a storyline. 
Oh, uh, this is normal. This is an ugly computer. God, this is boring. When's something interesting going to happen? That's all thought. Yeah. And that happens in the realm of thought, but it does not impinge upon the realm of vision or the realm of touch or the realm of hearing because they all exist independently and right. they don't they don't block each other sound doesn't block vision vision doesn't block touch they happen they happen concurrently and they don't impinge on each other they don't they don't get in each other's way yeah and then you and notice look look very carefully experience you can do you can do this and notice the way in which that's so yeah, I see that. And yeah. then, and then you can extricate these. You can you can say, boy, I'm you know this feels normal, and look. So then you can parse your experience and say, well, what's what's going on here? There's the presence of light, you know, um, which is just inconceivable. I mean, you don't know what light is. It's a miraculous apparition, mm -hmm. un unceasing, and in fact. You never see exactly the same pattern of light twice. So it's always new. It's always interesting. It's always surprising. Well, exactly what you're seeing right now in your field of vision, you have never seen precisely that before. Never. It's a whole new world. Every instant is an entirely new experience. Entirely. You know, the idea that there's a computer out there, there's no computer. There's the experience of what I'm calling a computer. And the experience never repeats. I've never seen this computer that's on my lap the, the, twice the same way. Every time I see it, it's a new vision. There's different angle of light. There's different... Everything is different. And the idea that there's uh, that something out there that isn't different or that's boring or that's normal is pure fantasy. Right. And that, and that fantasy, that narration, that storyline doesn't actually impinge on the sensory experience. And conversely, the sensory experience doesn't impinge on the storyline. That's helpful. So it seems like it impinges, the storyline seems like it impinges, but it really doesn't, is what I'm hearing you say. Well, it claims to. Thought is, thought is very, um, um, you know, analytical thought is very... Uh, um, what's the word? In, uh, it pretends to be invasive. It pretends to be about things. So thought, th thought claims to be much more powerful and central than it really is. Thought pretends. Thought thinks it knows about everything, yeah. and so it thinks it has a handle on everything. And so, th so then thought claims. Since thought claims to have a handle on everything, then there's nothing. There's nothing in the things themselves to have any, any additional information or input. But that's a lie, because thought doesn't know anything about anything else. Thought only knows about itself. Because is thought, is, <laughs> thought is not actually referential. And this is something to look at very closely. The, 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 the commonplace idea of thought, analytical thought, is I'm thinking about things. There's no such thing as about all a thought means is the presence of a thought. So thought is about itself, just like light means. So right now there's light in my field of vision. It's not about anything else. It's about the presence of light in my field of vision. Right now there's thought appearing in my, in my, in my mind, but the thought is just, a, just like the light. It's just energy that's appearing. It's not about anything other than the fact that energy is appearing. It may claim to be about it, but it isn't really. So did you say thought is or is not referential? Is not. There is no, nothing refers to anything else. It claims to. And that's the, that's the, the confusion. That's the, that's the, the, uh, the lie. It claims to. Yeah. Uh, Bruce, hi, how you doing? How are you? I'm not, I'm not hearing you. You're very, very quiet. Ah, okay, now that's good. Okay, all right. 
Um, so if I have a thought about the computer, I mean, I'll, uh, obviously there's no computer there, but there's an appearance of a semen computer. Isn't the semen thought about the semen computer? No. It claims to be, but it isn't really about anything because it doesn't actually relate to the computer. The thought, the thought constructs a caricature of what it thinks the computer is and then thinks about that caricature. It's like, it's, like, it's like someone saying, boy, I really hate Donald Trump. Well, they don't hate Donald Trump. They hate their idea of Donald Trump. They never met Donald Trump. And even if they met him, all they still have is their ideas and their thoughts about what he is or who he is. I'm still looking at an appearance that looks like a computer. Oh yeah, the computer's right. real. It's just it's just not a computer. Oh, so, so I have a thought. Yeah, that you're seeing. A computer. You're seeing a shape. You're having a thought. The thought is pretending the shape is called a computer. The compu the shape the shape you're seeing doesn't tell you it's a computer. Right, but it's still a pointing. It's still pointing to this is this is a. Uh, no, if, no, if it claims to be. It's not actually pointing at anything. It creates its own reality. Suppose I looked at this computer and said, "Oh, look, a boat anchor," and I tied a rope to it and used it to to try to hold my boat down. It's a boat anchor. Or it's a divining rod. I can pick it up and see if it balances, and if it balances, then that means yes, and if it falls over, that means no. And so all of a sudden, I'm doing dowsing with it. It's a dowser. It's not a computer. It's a light. It's lighting up my face right now. It just has all, it has all these annoying little squiggles on it. If I got rid of them, the light would be brighter. I almost, I almost can... I almost understand it, but it's still... Well, don't worry about it. Just play with it. Play with yeah. it as a notion. Thought, thought creates a, a, like a, a caricature, a cartoon of what it thinks the world is and then thinks about that cartoon and, and assumes that that's real. Meanwhile, all the other sense fields are also present in the way that they are but they're the way they are, and they don't exactly precisely correspond to the caricatures of the cartoon that thought pretends they do. I mean, that's that's the whole that's the whole nature of you know so-called delusion and spirituality in a nutshell. Is what is happening here is inconceivable. The mind pretends it's conceivable, creates a conceivable version of it, a conceivable caricature of it and then thinks about that caricature, and all of a sudden you know everything you know about your life. But meanwhile, the real life is present, which is utterly and completely beyond that, which is more than that, because it's spontaneous, it's infinite, it's non-repeating, it's not su su subject to analysis, it's, it's unresolvable. You can't, tell, you can't pin down precisely exactly what anything is anyway. Physicists don't know what, what anything is. Okay. I think I got it. So, when I look at that and see computer, the only thing that that relates to is all my ideas of what a computer is. Yes. Got it. Perfect. And, and the computer may seemingly correspond to some of those ideas, but that's just accidental. In actuality, it doesn't. In actuality, it's much more than that. So here's your idea of the computer, okay? Imagine that the same, the idea that the person who designed and built your actual computer, imagine what their idea of it is. They're thinking of it in terms of circuit boards and traces and, and chips and all this stuff, you know, or, the, or, or, or a, software, a software engineer. When they think of your computer, they think of the, oh, this subroutine's running and that subroutine's running and... So they, they, you, they would each have completely different 
your idea of what a computer is is not like anyone else's idea of what a computer is because of course it's a subjective story you tell yourself so some old lady looks at the computer and thinks it's this weird confusing box that like replaces a telephone and, and confuses the hell out of her because she doesn't know how to run it say or some 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 you know hotshot teenager looks at it and, and thinks of it as a way to hack and and, and and play virtual reality games you know so there's this one word, computer, that actually means something different to everyone else. Mm. But because we use the same word, we think we're talking about the same thing. Yeah. But there's your computer, and there's my computer, and there's a, a, a software engineer's computer, and there's a designer's computer. You know, I mean, it's all it's all it's all different different fantasies. And that's the same. I've thought about that with like color. Like if if I see the color red. And then someone says, yeah, I agree, it's red. They might be seeing just, you know, hypothetical. They might be seeing green. Of course. So they think green is my red. And you know what I'm saying? Sure. It's, but, but you know, uh, aside from that, um, aside from, from, from that kind of a notion, I mean, because that's something that you can't even know, but it's a certainty that any idea you have is going to be different than any idea someone else has, even if you're using the same words to describe it. You know, I can say, oh, I went into a bar. And when I say bar, I form a sort of a, a loose, sloppy composite of every bar I've ever been in. You've been in different bars, and you work in bars. So, you're right, when you say bar, you, you have a whole, different, a whole different flavor of gestalt comes up in your head. But we think we're talking about the same thing. And we may agree that, yeah, a bar is a place you can get a drink where people hang out, but that's pretty loose in general. When you, when you look down to what I'm actually thinking, it's a, it's a very sort of a, it's exactly the way it is. It's a certain kind of a sloppy, but, but precisely flavored cartoon that's going to be different than yours. Which means it doesn't exist at all. Except well, for it exists mind. as a fantasy, Right, right. In my mind, and yours exists as a fantasy in your mind, but it doesn't right. tie in. There's no real, actual bar out there that's right. like anything that either of us think when we say bar. And, and because we don't even know if someone else exists, the other person that we're thinking about is all another story in imagination. Also. Yeah, of course, of course. So you, what you are to me, is an image on a comp you know, a pattern of light on a computer sound coming out of my computer and you know memories appearing in my thought of times that I say oh boy this must be Bruce because it looks kind of like him if you know in this little mini miniature distorted version and and I, I seem to recall having you know talking to this guy named Bruce before which is which is sort of thoughts that are, that are appearing in my mind so that's what Bruce is to me period there's no you in the picture. <laughs> there's p images in my in my visual field, and there's and there's you know images in my mental field. Whether you whether you're there or not is your problem. <laughs> I am. Let me tell you, it's you that I don't know about. <laughs> so that really, really, that really pretty much destroys everything at that point. Yeah, I mean, destroy everything. Everything just. Crumbles. Yeah, because there is because there's nothing to destroy. There's just this, and you can't destroy this. Right. You can't make you can't make presents go away. Yeah. You but, know, sometimes you say I'll hear you say, um, you know, and when you die, it'll be this too, um, which um, I don't know. You you don't. I mean, how would you know that at that point it, when the body dies? For some, since it's being kind of. Um, uh, presented as a, you know, the body looking out and seeing things, and and you know, in our world, when bodies die, it, you know, I'm, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say, like, how do you have any idea on if this could change into something else? Well, it's not too important. Um, that's kind of an abstract notion. Yeah. Um, number one and number two, when that stops being an abstract notion, i.e., when it happens to you, then you'll know. But the important thing is not is not to speculate about things. The important thing is to see what is here now, and then you know, and then 
it, you can't you don't even know we don't even know if this is life anyway is this life what, what would that mean you know it's just it's this that is here and death is the cessation of life but does this that is here ever cease does it ever come into being you know does it it, it doesn't exist in time time exists in it it doesn't exist in space. Space exists in it. You know, space and time disappear all the time, but this doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. You go to sleep and space disappears. You start dreaming and there's a new space. You know, you can dream that you're, you know, you're flying over the Grand Canyon and then you have this vast, vast, huge, panoramic, very realistic dream. And all of a sudden your alarm goes off and you wake up and all that space that you were in is like, it, it, it's gone. It was never there. Where was it? It wasn't anywhere. It only, it only seems to be there. And when you go to sleep, this space you seem to be in now, where does it go? Thanks, Peter. It was great to talk to you, Bruce. It's been a while. Yeah. I think. Yeah, Nancy. So while I've got you here, are you thinking about doing another uh, two day in March in San Rafael? Just yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it'll go on the website um, when it's when it's finalized. Oh, okay. so there is a possibility that something will be happening. Yes, awesome. it's in Thank the works. You. Great. There's, there's really no need to pay too much attention to, to all these kind, of, trying to sort out all these kinds of issues. Um, it's like, except it's, it's less like clearing away the clutter, clearing away the underbrush. The real, the only thing that's that's important is feel, feel presence, feel this that is here. Presence is very concrete. It's easy to think of presence as being an abstraction, but in fact. That 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 this is present. That your experience is present. That here is um, is palpable. And how is that so? How is here palpable? How is it certain that this is? F feel that it, it's certain that this is because something is present. Something is something is something is the way that it is. And it is possible to feel it. And in feeling it, there is a, a, a hyper-intelligent engagement that, um, uh, that where it explores itself. Because what's feeling it, what's, what's seeing your experience, what's looking out of your eyes and all that, is this presence itself. 
you know, and what is being felt is the presence. So it's it's an engagement of presence with presence. So simply feeling presence, feel the presence of your experience, not as an abstraction. Don't worry about the words. Just feel the isness of of this moment of of you here, the certainty of it, the absolute inclusive comprehensiveness of it. And just feel that. Feel this. What's it feel like? You can't think about it because there's nothing to think about. But it's so obvious and it's so rich and profound in its very nature. I just found that really valuable. That just something really resonated hearing hearing that. It's really good to see you, Peter. I um, often can't make Saturdays because I work, so I'm really glad for this Monday evening opportunity. And I'm going to have to sign off soon. Just Great. Have a nice evening. Yeah, hi, John. Hi. Um, uh, sometimes, or somehow I find it, it, like when I'm listening to you uh, talk, like you were just doing, sort of guiding um, attention into the experience, I, I feel like I can, I can follow that, and um, like when I'm listening to your voice, I can follow, follow it in. But mm -hmm. then later... Uh, when I'm on my own, sometimes I just I I feel like I, I get into kind of coiled up in thoughts and mm -hmm. um, like almost like I don't have the same um, certainty of uh, the presence of being mm -hmm. uh, when I'm on my own. Um, and and also um, and I also feel like I, I have this. I have this subtle idea that um, presence has a certain feeling to it, or it should feel a certain way. Mm. And and, and I, I kind of am looking for a kind of recognizable, um, you know, that whatever it is I'm looking for. And, and I, I, I can see that that's standing in the way of, well, I... Or I I imagine that to be standing in the way. But. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's easy to have ideas of how you think things are, are, are supposed to be, and then you're not really paying attention to the thing in themselves. You're you're comparing it to this to the notion you have, and you get all caught up in that stuff. Um, all, all of this, 
you know, um, um, learning to relax into being more nakedly and more directly with the experience itself um, may have a learning curve. I mean, you may have to kind of train in it. And the, the fact that you even know it's there, the fact that you even were interested in coming to a, a, a talk like this uh, and so on and so forth shows that you have an, you have a sense of it. You know that there's something there, there's something going on. And this, your interest will as you as you train in your interest by being with it you will your 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 skillfulness um, will deepen you'll become better at being able to do for yourself of directing your attention and it's important to remember it's not important to always keep your attention on you know some something in particular um, the point is to just do it do it when it's easy do it when it's comfortable and then otherwise just let go and go wherever you go. Because in, in, finally, wherever you go in, within your experience, you haven't gone anywhere. You're still in experience. You're still in presence. So there's no, there's no good presence and bad presence. There's no better presence or worse presence. There's no strong presence or weak presence. It's all full on 100%. The only point in noticing it is to discover that fact and the more fully you discover that fact, the more certainly you'll know that it doesn't matter. The more certainly you'll be free to, to realize that I don't, since it is that, I don't need to pay attention to it. You know, because wherever I, wherever I go, whatever I get caught up in is exactly this. It's not going, it's like in a dream, it doesn't matter where you go in a dream, you can't leave the dream. There's no better or worse place in a dream, you're still in the dream. And it's not about what it looks like or what the, the quality seems to be like. Um, I mean, mind you, there's all sorts of qualities that present. You can have good dreams and bad dreams and dreams you like and dreams that really suck. But it, it doesn't, it's still just a dream. So in terms of the dream, in terms of the dream itself, it's all the same. And when you see it's all the same, then you don't give a shit so much about the bad parts because it's just a dream. It's like a nightmare. A nightmare or a stressful dream it can seem to be a problem. But if you happen to go a little lucid in the dream, you get a sense of, oh, wow, I'm just dreaming. All of a sudden, all that lightens up. It may still look like a nightmare. There may still be some monster chasing you or whatever. But you don't give a shit because, it, because hey, it's just a dream. You know, who cares? So it's kind of like that. It's kind of like play with experience from time to time when it's easy. And as you do that over a period of time, cumulatively, you'll get more and more of a sense. You know, it'll build up maybe very gradually, who knows? But you, you can get more and more of a sense of, oh, wow, this is there's something really amazing going on here that's always here. It never goes away. Your experience never stops. It's always changing what it seems to look like. And sometimes it feels good, and sometimes it feels bad, sometimes it feels clear, sometimes it's murky, you know. Um, sometimes it's not what you think it should be, you know. All this stuff appears, but it all appears in experience, and experience itself doesn't change one iota. Experience is like a TV set, and you can have any kind of show on the TV, but it's still just a TV set, and the TV doesn't get changed by the show that's on it. So you can have a distracted, pissed off, frustrated experience, and it's just a TV show. Or you can have a show where you're like right on and everything's locked in and it's all just zinging and, and fabulous. And it's still just a TV show. So you don't actually gain anything or lose anything by the flavor of what appears in your experience. So that's the point of when I say feel presence. It's not like trying to find some good presence or some super special presence. Presence is already special just by the fact that it is. Presence is like the TV set, and, and what's you, what's, what seems to be going on, whatever it is, is just the show that's on. And sure, there's good shows and bad shows. There's shows you like and shows you don't like, but the TV doesn't give a shit. The TV is just, it's just there. It's not, it's not, it doesn't get improved from a good show, and it doesn't get damaged from a bad show. And, and as you as you sort of 
tune into just the, what is this experience? Instead of, instead of following what's going on, what seems to be happening in experience, tune into what is experience itself? So here's this experience. What is it? What do I mean by this word experience? What am I talking about? And, you know, it's very vague and, and you'll space out and you'll look at it and you'll drift off into thoughts and all that. Don't worry about that. You just, just check it out every once in a while, any old way that, that it, is, it seems, you know, doable at the moment. Just say, well, what is this experience? And then just sort of let that, let that question hang there for a minute. What is this? What is this? Experience is right here. What is it? What is it that's here? And then it hangs there. And then you get caught up in something, you think of something, you go do something. It doesn't matter. And then sometime sooner or later, a little later, you go, okay, let, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me ask myself again. What is this experience? What is it that's here? What is this? And you just feel that for a second. And then, you know, you, you, get drift, you drift off again. That's the, that's the way you do it. Don't worry about, you don't need to hold on something or, or get some point of view that you have to maintain. You just let yourself sort of, t it's like touching home base or something. You let yourself really just sort of drop everything and feel experience itself. And over time, something, something very strange happens. And you, it doesn't make any sense, and you can't really talk about it. Yeah. Um, but it, but it's for real, and and it, and you'll know it's for real because you feel it. Yeah. <laughs> but don't don't you don't need to make a game of it where you where you you're trying to do a certain thing and you come down on yourself if you if you don't do it or it doesn't come out that way. Don't worry about that. Just sort of. Let yourself feel it every once in a while, and then just then then let, then, be, then let yourself go. Then whatever you do is okay; it doesn't matter. Yeah. And and then and then you know sooner or later you'll come back and feel it again, and that's that's all that matters. That's very very powerful. It's deceptively yeah. powerful. It's it will if you just do that alone, your your entire experience, your entire sense of yourself will be transformed um, over time. Just that. That's the entire yoga right there. And don't worry about what you do most of the time. Don't worry about, oh, I get distracted, or I get pissed off, or I get caught up in my dreams thinking about, what, or, you know, whatever. Don't worry about that. That takes care of itself. All right. Thank you. Sure. Hey, Peter. Yeah, hi, Anne. Hi. Um, I keep thinking over and over again about something I've heard you say a lot of times um, that I really love, which is let it show you what it is. Yeah. And um, it just seems to suggest that there's not really any heavy lifting I need to, to do. No. It does all the work. Right. Yeah. All you have to do is sort of is, is open yourself to it. It's not like some big thing of like, oh, I have to open it. It's just like, this, this, this means sort of just, just sort of for a moment, just sort of let go of, of things and just, just feel it. That's all. Yeah, it feels like it, it's, it's a very subtle thing. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's subtle, but it's very, very powerful. And that this is, it does all the work. It does the heavy lifting. So there's nothing you need to do, you know. It, it, the nature of what this is 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 truly and intrinsically astounding, and the nature of the inherent intelligence which is perceiving it is also truly astounding and powerful. And they do all the work automatically. They do all the work because of what they are. There's no. It's not like oh, I have to do something, or I have to remember this, or I have to see this, or I have to, you know, look at it this way, or something. None of that stuff. Just the just the, the the engagement, the open open ended engagement, engagement without you know without heavy handed preconceptions. <clears throat> yeah. What could be easier? And it's fun too. You, you get permission. So much more 
gentle than the other way around too, which is not only is it that it fails when you're trying to, when I'm trying to do it, but it's so much more violent too. It's just like, I don't know. There's something so gentle about like, let it show you what it is. It is. It's very gentle. It's very effortless. And it's fun because you have you're having you're giving yourself permission to space out. You're giving yourself permission to trip on it. You're giving yeah. a position. You're giving yourself permission to just sort of ah, to sort of float, take, have a big sigh and float out into into just presence for a while, whatever, whatever. And just that, you know, the the the, the enjoyment and the pleasure and the fun of that is also powerfully um, transformative you know in in the sense that all the all all all, all we spiritual junkies are, are lusting after <laughs> because what is here and the way it is here is 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 mind-blowingly inconceivably weird and by by letting yourself feel it that weirdness becomes more and more obvious. And that weirdness d dominates and essentially renders, renders irrelevant the, 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 the weird non-weirdness that our minds try to put on it, normalcy and dullness and the process and all of these pathetic success and failure and all these pathetic notions that the mind comes up with. Because this... Is this is not this just has nothing to do with any of that, and and it's so palpable, um, and and so letting yourself palpate it, letting yourself feel that which is palpable, it it communicates that, and it it it, it over a period of time, it 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 self verifies its own nature that it is the way that it is, and that you are that that you are this that is here. Because of course your hereness and its hereness are one and the same. If I if I declare that I I want to let it show me what it is, um, that already suggests an openness to that it, it may not be what I what I thought it was. Yeah, sure, exactly so. You're giving, you're giving it a chance to just be what it is, yeah. and and you're and you're but you're there. You're you're like, you know, show me your stuff. Yeah. Do your thing. Here I am. Mm -hmm. Give me your best shot. <laughs> Lay it on me. Yeah. That's very cool. Thank you. Yeah, it is very cool. It's really really cool. I mean. What this happened, the way this, the, the fact that this happens to be the way it is, actually, is is mind-blowingly, inconceivably cool, and the fact that that it, can, can, by its very nature, contains and conveys all that's necessary to 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 uh, 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 what's a good word to initiate one into into settling into the truth of that and the power of that is all effortlessly is also um, amazing
It gets to be more and more fun when, as you come to notice that you're, 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 you're always already feeling this. You're never not doing it. It's not like you're doing something new. By, by attending to, to, to say, feel presence, you're not really feeling presence. You're just noticing that, of course you feel presence. You always feel present. You know, you don't have to say, am I present or not? Let me see. Let me check it out. It's like, well, duh, I'm present. This is here. This is. Presence is continually being felt. It's continually explicit and full, full on and inclusive. Um, and so the, the the effortlessness and the and the the, uh, the the fact that it is entirely independent of what you do or don't do, or there needs to be a certain way, or that you even need to pay attention to it, is is becomes laughable. The bedrock certainty of actuality of radiant presence um, is, you know, completely obvious. And so all of this, all of these, this, these, these hoops we jump through of trying to develop our sensitivity to noticing the way that that's so is, is an absurdity. Because in the end of the day, it, it's a big joke. Because you know, it, you. You notice that you've always been noticing it, and and you can't not notice it. So what's there to notice? <laughs> what's there to do? You know, try and stop presence. Okay, instead of saying instead of saying feel presence or or, or you know just, just explore presence, try and stop presence. What happens? Okay, I'm trying. To, I'm stopping presence now. <laughs> Good fucking luck. <laughs> and I mean, you know, that reveals the absolute inevitability, the absolute, um, um, uh, completely self-evident um, certainty, givenness of this actuality. Uh, yeah, hi, Gavin. Yeah, um, <clears throat> so um, you, you're talking about open-ended engagement, and um, um, so 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 um, th th this th that is a uh, it, um, it 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 ends and uh, well, it's like a attention attending to itself. Is that you could you call it that, but that's it's it's attention noticing that attention is already attentive. At attention never stops. It's not like there's a cessation of attention. Uh, well, well in, in terms of like um, tri tripping out on the the weirdness of of what's going on, uh -huh. right? Um, that there's. Um, uh, like I, I was thinking about um, uh, attention and attending in terms of like um, uh, a synchronicity, like um, 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 it, 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 it seems that, well, like you, you've even talked about that in terms of like um, tarot or other things like where, where there seems to be a memo from from the irrational, right? Where where, where, where there, there seems to be like a, a, a feedback. But I, I guess you've, you've also talked about that in terms of like the, the moment of, of realization. Right? All, all of that is already the case. Synchronicity is already the case. There's no this and that to, to have synchronicity with each other. This is synchronicity. Synchronicity is present. Synchronicity is the present moment. And attention is the present moment. And um, so having, so attending to attention is redundant. Attention is already attending to attention. Not that it, um, and, well, and attention is, attention's not a separate thing. 
it's not like there's this there's this presence and then there's attention over here that's somehow doing something. Presence is attention. The mind of attention, what we call attention, comes in many different flavors. It comes in fla spaced out flavors. It comes in focused flavors. It comes in, you know. Um, uh, distorted flavors, it comes in all kinds of flavors, but it's still always the same thing. The attention is always the same regardless of how it's presenting, just like light is always the same regardless of what shapes and colors are presenting. Um, <clears throat> just a moment ago, you you're talking about how um, like just tuning in in an open-ended or open-ended engagement sort of way sure. that that can to totally transform one's experience over time. Yes, like, it's like the that the, the weirdness um, um, comes more and more in. Um, it doesn't. Or, or it doesn't it's, come more in. You let yourself notice it more. Um, the more you 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 develop a sensitivity to perceiving that the way that it is relative to being distracted by the, the, the narration that, that your mind is used to making about what it's claiming that things are. If you want to, if you want to put it in language, you, you make, it, make it seem complex, you can say you're attending to nonverbal or non-conceptual experiential presence. So, for example, the field of vision is non-conceptual. There are no concepts in the field of vision. The field of vision is entirely light patterns. There's no concepts there one way or the other. So, when you attend to the field of vision, you're outside the realm, or let's say you're, you're not attending to the realm of concepts, for example. So, it, so letting yourself feel presence, letting yourself open to presence is a euphemism for being with direct experience um, outside the, of, the, of the immediate impingement or outside of the dom domination of concepts, conceptual analysis, an interpretive framework. This is here whether you're interpreting it or not. So pay more attention to that here-ness and pay less attention to the interpreting. Just from time to time. You can take something that you're used to looking at all the time and look at it as if you don't know what it is. Look at it as if you have, all of a sudden you had amnesia and you completely forgot everything about it. It's like, wow, what is this presence that's appearing in my vision or in my sound or in my touch? You know, if I forget that I have hands, then what is this that is present? You know. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I, I, I guess I, I, I get stuck a little bit in, in thinking that it, it seems like there's a, a development from like an earlier moment where uh, one is. Um, one, one thinks about attending to different things or or um, opening up one's uh, one's attention and then uh, after a while um, it, it, it doesn't seem like um, there's, there's a one doing things or, or there's um, I, I don't know I, I guess sure it, it, but but that's what you say. It doesn't seem like that's just a matter of of becoming more and more acclimated to what's actually going on. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess the, the sticking point is just um, me trying to conceptualize things. Or, yeah. Or it, to there's nothing wrong with trying to conceptualize things. Just realize that you are doomed to failure. It's a, it's a pointless activity. It's a game that your mind plays with itself. And it's a fine game. It's like playing solitaire. But it doesn't have anything to do with anything. It's, not tr it's never true. So this is about going to direct experience and see what is true. 
since your concepts are never true, but you don't need to suppress them. It's not like you need to stop thinking. That doesn't, it doesn't matter if they're there or not. They're just not about anything. So th since they're not about anything, the concepts are not a good vehicle to, to engage with actuality because concepts aren't about actuality. Actuality is nonverbal. Actuality is inconceivable. And so all of this is about attending to actuality. And then when you, once you, once you have, you know, you've got enough distance from your concepts enough to notice act that actuality exists and that it is non-conceptual, then you can look at your concepts and notice they're actual too. And it, everything it sort of turns upside down, it turns backwards. Instead of actuality being conceptual, concepts are actual. But not in the way they pretend to be, not semantically. There is no such thing as semantic meaning. Meaning is, is irrational and, and uh, 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 nonverbal. Concept, semantics and concept pretend to have meaning, but, but it's not true. Thank you. Sure. <coughs> well, it's getting close to quitting time, so I think I'm going to say good night. Um, it's been lovely to, to be with you all tonight. So, um, uh, have a good night. Good <laughs> night, Peter. Bye, Peter. Thank you. Thank you, Peter.